negative comment made at training or a destructive comment will be taken on board and felt sorely by that athlete. You will move on. So it's not what you do as a coach, it's how you do it and how you have the athlete do it. If I put up a training program here, if I was capable of doing that in track and field, each one of you, which is a good training program, would take it away and deliver it in a different way and get a different result. So the training environment must always reflect the competition environment and vice versa. There's no good training down here if you wish to compete up there because you'll be preparing athletes for failure and a loss of confidence. If you train up here to compete here, you will prepare athletes with great confidence and you will promote confidence within that athlete. Make sure that you read the athletes very carefully right? and make sure you understand that the athletes will read you and understand you much, much better than you do them. Athletes today want minimum effort for maximum return. It's the era of instant gratification. Go into a bookstore, how to read German in 24 hours, how to make a million dollars in a week, how to speak seven languages in six months how to learn computers in three easy lessons. Everything is instant gratification. Athletes today, minimum effort for maximum return. Do what you love, love what you do, and always give more than expected. And instill that into the athletes that you work with. If you love it, give more. If you want to do extra work, do it with the talented athletes that are going to get a benefit from it, don't punish the negative athletes by making them do more. That will have no effect at all. I've seen coaches making athletes repeat the workout because they did a lousy job of it. Much better to take the athletes who do the great job of the workout and say, look, I'll spend another hour with you teaching you a different skill or a new skill and forget the ones who don't want to give. Teach winning. Teach achievement against the odds. Teach performance under pressure. A 3 two, one policy. In swimming, I have a 3 two, one policy. I make the athlete compete three times at their level of competence. And at this level, I have high expectation, high demand, low tolerance for mistakes, for loss of skill, perfect performance, single event focus, get it right. Then we have a policy of two below. That's where you take the athlete and you compete down with the athlete in a, in a competition below their standard, where you expect, demand, and do not tolerate anything less than perfect performance and a winning performance. You teach the athlete to win. And while they're winning, you can be critical of the performance. You're never critical of the athlete. You're critical of the performance. You never criticize the athlete. You criticize the performance. That's a chance to experiment when you uh, practice two below. And then you have a one above policy. That's where you take the athlete and you put them in the impossible situation. You put them in the position where they can't win. It's impossible for them to win. That's where you deliver high praise. It's where you offer the greatest amount of support. Where you lift the athlete with your coaching skills. Where you lift them to a higher performance than they would have expected of themselves or anyone else would have expected them against the greatest odds because you teach them to perform under pressure against invincible odds. And that pays dividends later on in their life when they have to move from the age group program into the open field or the senior field and you teach life lessons against the odds. And I think that's one of the really important uh, skills in coaching. of today's young athlete. I want it. I want it now. It must be fun. I'd like to be paid for it. And if I can't have all four, jam it up your jumper. <laughs> all right? And as coaches, we have to move on with that. Because we can't change that society. It's, just, it's come to us and there's nothing we can do with it. 
but you have to move with your coaching. Vary your presentation. Don't be predictable. Always be a moving target. Read the athletes better than they read you. Every great athlete, a team that you coach, is an experiment of one. One great coaching effort or one great performance doesn't produce a coaching model that can be consistent or repeated. Every athlete that you coach is an experiment of one, and every team that you coach is an experiment of one. Experience is something that you can only acquire. You can't buy it. You have to go and, and do the, the task. Too many coaches today want to do their basic coaching skills and then coach the national team. They don't want to spend their time being an assistant coach and learning the drills and the skills. You have to spend time at task in order to move forward. Never put skill acquisition ahead of skill perfection. Too many coaches want to take the athlete to a new skill before they've learned and perfected the skill that they're currently doing. And you as a coach must have the ability to sell that. Because if you move on all the time, you end up with an athlete with a lot of poor skills rather than an athlete with a lot of great or with a few great skills. And it's the core skills that make the difference. Make sure you encourage truthful athletes. Athletes will be up front. There's an environment where they can tell it how it is and you respect that and you try and move them on. The old story, two university students just doing their end of year exams. And they get to the last exam, which is on Monday, and they decide to go away for the weekend and celebrate and have a party early. So they go away, and get on the booze, have a great time on the weekend, and sleep in Monday morning, don't make it back for the last exam. Go to the university lecture and say, look, we're coming back from where we were on Sunday, we got a flat tire in the middle of nowhere. We didn't have a spare. We had to go and get a spare from the local garage and fix it. Is there any chance at all, is there any possibility that we can reset the exam tomorrow? The professor thought about it. He said, yep, there's no problem at all. So the athletes or the, the students walked out and said, yes. Yes, how good was that? We got our weekend of party. We saw the social side of life. And they go in on Tuesday morning, the professor's there and said, look, it's only one question, but I need one of you to go in that room and one of you to go in the other room and the, the, the question's on the desk. And they walk in, sit down, and it says, which tire? <laughs> <laughs> so, always got to be one leap ahead. <laughs> In my early days as a coach, in my early days as a coach, I used to bring the swimmers in at the Australian Institute of Sport, and I'd sit them down and I'd say, well, here's the list of rules. You can't do that, you can do this, I expect this, I expect that, this is off bounds, this is not acceptable, that's acceptable, I want this, I want that. And by the time they left, they were shaking in their boots. Mum and Dad were thinking, this is not the right place for my child. But I felt good because I, said this is how it was, I'd be. I learned very quickly. Bring the athletes in and say, well, Freddie, this is what I'm willing to give as a coach. I'm willing to give this, this, this and this. Now tell me what you're willing to give. Tell me how far you're willing to go beyond the point of commitment before I decide whether I want to coach you. And that's a different philosophy. Get the athletes to commit rather than you commit to the athletes. Tell the athlete you're going to go the whole hog. I'm going to take the whole distance. I'm going to be there all the way. Now what are you willing to give? Listen carefully and then say, look, there's a coach down the road that will suit you perfectly. Or, yep, this is the program for you. We can get along. All right? I had an athlete 
come into the program in Canberra and he read all the rules. Signed up. First 